Welcome back guys to the next part in the Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we went ahead and talked briefly about caching images for performance via our image loader. In this part, we're gonna start building out and actually discussing the character detail screen, basically what we see when we tap on a single character. Drop a like, subscribe, throw a comment down there before we get into things and let's dig in. So one thing that I keep forgetting to do and I keep reminding myself is we are going to commit and push our changes. So once again, we'll CD into our folder. We're going to stage everything. We're going to say more updates as the commit message and we will give this a git push as well. And just like that, we're good to go. Let's talk about what we want to show for a single character. Now, if you recall, we have actually created a controller for this. We have in the controllers folder, a folder called other, and it is our RM character detail view controller. And essentially what we want to do is whenever we have a single character, we can get information um, for a single character, right? So let's actually on the left on our API docs, click on get a single character. And you'll notice that you get a bunch of things back. Not only do you get, you know, um, the name, the status, like the basic stuff, but you also get things like their location. You also get things along the lines of uh, which episodes have they appeared in, which are actually pointers to other information about uh, the episode. So this is another endpoint where we can get information about episode one. So we can actually show quite a bit of information uh, about a particular character. So let's actually think about how we want to build this UI out and what things we want to accomplish. So what would be cool is if we had a you know nice big image of the character at the top and then followed by maybe their name, a bunch of pieces of information like their status, their location, et cetera, et cetera. But then what I also want to show, which looks like it gives us a collection of elements for this, is which episodes did they appear in, right? And instead of having a list of that, maybe we want a, a horizontal carousel is what I'm going to call it, where we can swipe through, you know, n number of episodes, right? So if we look at the example that is given to us here, let me go ahead and open this up. We'll see that there's actually a ridiculous number of characters in here, or rather uh, episodes that this character appears in. Well, not ridiculous, but it is certainly more than like a handful. And it'd be nice to have a horizontal carousel and it'll also give us obviously an example of how to build a carousel. So let's start piecing all of this together. Now, a view that would be dynamically configurable to handle all of this uh, is either a table view or a collection view. So we are going to actually leverage a collection view again, but we're gonna use a compositional layout, which is something I feel isn't covered very broadly uh, within the iOS community. So let's actually go ahead and build this out. So we have our controller here. We could build it out directly inside of here, but we're gonna be good citizens and abstract everything. So let's close all this jazz up. We're gonna open up views and I'm gonna create a new view in here. We'll subclass a base UI view and I will call this a, I think actually we have a view for this already if I'm not mistaken. We have a uh, RM character detail view. So actually we already have this in here. So this is a view for single character, single character info. We're actually going to override the initializer. And let me just stick a background color here. We'll do system purple perhaps. I'll also override the uh, required initializer, toss a fatal error in there with unsupported. And let's see what else we wanna do. We're gonna to want to use uh, constraints here. So we are gonna say translates auto resizing masks into constraints is false. And let's go ahead and stick this view into our controller, which I don't think we've done yet. We have not done that yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say our detail view is simply going to be this. I'm gonna to toss a mark comment here for our initializer. And let's set up this view by saying view, add sub view, the detail view, and let's go ahead and say add constraints. And we're gonna create this function down here. And we'll say NS layout constraints activate. And if I'm not mistaken, I can steal this from the other controller we already wrote out because more or less it'll be identical. We just wanna pin this uh, detail view to every single corner of the safe area layout guide. So I'll change this to be our detail view. So let's go ahead and build and run. 
and we should hopefully see our purple view show up when we click on this. So cool, we in fact do see it. That is awesome. So perhaps one thing that we wanna do is we also wanna have a nice little share button at the top right here. Maybe we can share out via text message or some other mechanism information about whatever character we're looking at. So to do that, we're gonna add a navigation item right button. So we're gonna say add a right bar button and this is gonna be a UI bar button item. We can go ahead and create it with a typical uh, style and I'm gonna use the action item. The target is gonna be self and the selector is which function should I call when you tap on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say did tap share and we wanna go ahead and add this down below. It needs to be an objective C selector. So make sure you do annotate this at objc and we're gonna go ahead and implement this later on. So share character info. And let's start bringing in that collection view that we have previously mentioned. Let's at least start building out some simple, simple UI pieces. One thing I'll draw your attention to is we currently do have this view model here that we've created already where we passed in the character for which we want to get information. Now on the character, there is actually a URL and this URL actually does give us the URL endpoint for that character. So if I actually come here and say public var request URL, I can go ahead and actually return a URL and I can actually do character dot URL, which is a string. So let's go back to our controller. Actually, before even uh, setting up that collection view, one thing that we can do is uh, as soon as view did load is called here, we can go and say, go ahead and fetch the information for this character. So I can actually say fetch character info. And previously I, I stuck uh, the fetch function inside of the view model, but in this case, uh, I'm gonna stick it here. And what we'll do is we'll abstract this eventually to the view model. So. What, and actually, instead of even doing that, that's redundant work, we're gonna be intelligent, and I'm actually gonna just call it directly from in here. So let's put this here, we'll say view model, we're gonna say fetch character info, we'll say data, maybe it's a better term, and we'll come into here and actually create this function. And let's see, that is the view, that's not what we want, we want the view model here. And inside of here, we're gonna have public func to fetch this. We can privatize the request URL and we're gonna attempt to create a request, an RM request from this URL. So we'll say RM request with a URL. And if you recall, we had set up this function previously uh, to actually paginate. So we're gonna leverage it again. We also need to unwrap the URL. So we'll say URL is the request URL. And here we'll have the URL and I am also going to just print out, and I'll print it out perhaps up here. I'm gonna print out character.url. I think we'll want to actually tweak this a little bit um, because we aren't handling multiple path components, but let's see. So we certainly do have this. We'll split this out and then we have character slash one. And if I actually come in here and add a print Failed to create, we should actually see that printed out because we currently are not handling multiple path components. Well, actually, it looks like we are not failing to create. So let's see what request URL we are actually getting back because I have a hunch that it is not correct. So we're getting slash character. We're actually not adding the one here, which is important because this will actually give us information about character with ID one. So let's jump into this initializer for RM request and let's actually handle this. So let's find that initializer here. I'm gonna add a comment on it. So I'm gonna say creates or let's see, attempt to create request URL to parse. And essentially what we want to do is when we split this by the slash, what we wanna do is we're gonna say if the components isn't empty, this is the endpoints that we're using. That's awesome, but what we actually also want to do is create path components. So we are going to go ahead and say path components, and this needs to be an array. And what we'll do here is we are going to say uh, if components.count is greater than one, meaning we don't have 
only the endpoints. We have something in addition to that. What we can do is we can say, let me create path components here, will be basically this. And what we can do is we can simply say path components is the components. And we also want to say path components drop first. Uh, essentially, we're just assigning all the components, and let's say this is the endpoint, which it in fact is. We don't want to uh, duplicate having that. So here it's saying we're not using the results of this. So I think we also have a uh, remove first as well. We're just going to say remove first, and we'll just ignore the results. And let's see why this is yelling at me here. Extra argument path components in call. We actually don't need this here. I actually put this in the wrong place. This is the endpoint. We actually want to put this here. We want to say path uh, components, and this will be path components. Let's see why else it's yelling at me, and we will adjust accordingly. So empty uh, literal here for the array just wants to know what should go inside of it. So I'm going to say it's an array of strings. And let's go ahead and actually see what URL we get printed out now. So I'm going to open my console. I'll click onto this, and now we get uh, API character slash one, which in fact is correct. It's the correct string that we expect to see. So when we dispatch a API request, an API call, we'll get the appropriate thing. So let's go back to our uh, view model. Let's see if I can find it. So let me open up our view model folder, and it is the detail view view model. We no longer want to print it. Rather, what we want to do is we just want to make a request. So we're going to say rm service dot shared and we'll go ahead and say execute this request the response that we expect to get i don't actually know at the moment so i'm going to stick a string in here and completion will just be once again a result this should look very familiar since we've done it a few times and i'm just going to print out a string describing whatever we get back in both the success case as well as the failure case now, before uh, jumping into things, let me go ahead and take a look at what we actually get back. It looks like we get a single character back. So let me jump to RM character and let's see what that looks like. We have episodes on here, image, URL, created. Let's see what this looks like. So this does in fact look correct. So we're gonna say we expect to get back from this API call a RM character. So try and decode the response to that. So let's actually go ahead and give this a run. I'm just going to close all these files I have open. You can use Command W to do so. It actually makes Xcode a little snappier. So let's build and run that. Let's open up our console. And when I click on a character, we should expect to see the response. All right, so there's a response for clicking on, I think Rick is what I clicked on. So let's go back and see. Yep, clicking on Rick Sanchez, we actually get the information about Rick. So awesome. So now that we've got all this stuff in here, we probably want to hang on to the response in our view model here. Uh, and if you actually think about it, do we even need to make this call? Because we already have a character in here. So what we're doing is actually a little redundant. So this is actually what I wanted to point out by writing all this out. We don't actually even need any of this. By going and getting the characters, it's not returning a trimmed down version of the model, it's actually returning the entire character model. So there's actually absolutely no point of even building this. But as a you know virtue of doing that, we did in fact extend our RM request. So let's jump into our controller. Let's get rid of the view model fetch here. We don't need it anymore. And we can jump into the RM detail view and start putting together our collection view. So we're gonna very briefly just put it together and then in the next video, we're gonna dive into the specifics of compositional layouts because they are a little complicated, but we're gonna stub a bunch of stuff out. So we're gonna say add constraints. We are also going to say private func. We're gonna say here, let's see, we'll call it uh, create collection view and it's going to create and return a collection view and you'll see in a moment why I'm doing it like this. Up here, we're gonna have some properties. So first and foremost, we are going to want a collection view. And by default, it's actually going to be uh, nils, AKA optional. And similar to our character list view, we're gonna want a spinner. So the easiest way to do that is copy and paste it directly from in here, which is what I'm gonna do. 
So we'll grab that and we're gonna go into the detail view and I shall paste it right there. And we're gonna go ahead and just add some comments here. So we're gonna want to certainly add constraints. All right, looking good. We are also going to say guard let uh, collection view. And actually we don't need this to be uh, nullable in this function here, which it's not. So we're just gonna say uh, let collection view equals, and we're gonna call that function. We're gonna say create collection view. We're gonna hang on to it here. And then we can go ahead and say view add sub views. And we're gonna add this collection view as well as add the spinner. We're gonna add some constraints to it here. We're gonna say NS layout constraints activate. We'll want some stuff for the spinner as well as the collection view. So once again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna copy and paste. So that's actually the exact same setup we have in here, which is really nice. We can actually use it verbatim. Whenever you copy and paste, good rule of thumb, just look at what you're pasting. Sometimes I see people write things that, you know, they don't even look at. And to be fair, I'm guilty of it myself, but just take a look at it. So here we do need to unwrap the collection view since it is nullable in the global scope. And uh, let's see why this is yelling at me here. So it looks like it's yelling at me, cannot find a view in scope because we want to add sub view directly. We're already in a UI view subclass, so we can do that. And let's see, we need to just create a collection view here and return it. So that's pretty simple, easy enough. We're gonna instantiate a collection view with a frame of zero and a layout, which I'm gonna create up above since it gets a little verbose. We are going to return said collection view. We are also going to register a base cell like we initially did so I can illustrate how compositional layouts work in the next video. And let me see what else we are going to do. So we are also going to want to create that layout. So compositional layouts basically let you create a layout where every single element, section, and group might have a different dynamic size. So this is pretty simple where everything is vertically scrolling, everything is you know the exact same size, but compositional layouts is actually what Apple uses to build really nice carousels, you know, dynamic grids with sizes. If you've ever used like the Pinterest app, things like that, that's what compositional layouts are used for. And they're really, really cool. So we're going to say UI collection compositional layout. And let's go ahead and find it. And the one that we're going to use here is with the section provider. Now, if you just hit enter, it'll autocomplete with this closure. Here we get the section index. The next thing is a environment for the uh, particular collection layout. We're not gonna care about that. But what we expect to return here is a NS collection layout section. And this section expects a group. So for now, I'm not gonna dive too far into this, but what I will do is we are going to write our own function for this instead of doing it in that closure because it does get a little intense. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna say self create section four, and then we're just gonna pass in the section index and we'll return it. And then down here, we're gonna say create section four section index int, and this expects us to return a particular section. So if you compile, you'll see we have an error down here, which makes sense because we haven't actually implemented this yet, but I digress, I shall pause here, and in the next video, we're gonna go in de into depth about how this works, how we're gonna actually lay out the screen, and all the other interesting tidbits that we need to care about in terms of how to set this up. So thanks for watching, drop a like down below, appreciate a comment and a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part.